The 2012 Australian Open premiered to a record crowd. A ceremony entranced onlookers at centre stage, the opening act performed by Bernard Tomic, whose late run saw 22nd seed Fernando Vadasco eliminated from the running and a homegrown audience well and truly captured by the young Australian's efforts. The shock came on day two when home hero Sam Stoza lost at the hands of Romanian Serana Castea. It's disappointing for sure and I know that everyone was behind me so it's more disappointing that obviously that's, uh, I don't get another chance to step out on court. Hewitt's match was the highlight in a thrilling four set victory against German Cedric Marcel Steed. The hottest seats in the house were on Margaret Court Arena when David Nalbandian let go at the umpire. He eventually lost to American John Isner in the four hour and 41 minute battle. Later, Marcus Bagdadis would soon lose his call. And the match. Leighton Hewitt survived the battle of the Grand Slam champions, reaching the third round after opponent Andy Roddick was forced to retire. I said, ooh, it's hot in here. There must be some tomic in the atmosphere. Woo! It was a tough competition between Tomic and 13th seed Alexander Dolgopolov, the ball eventually falling in Tomic's favour, thrusting the young Tomic into the path of the indestructible Roger Federer. I hope I play good against him. I have to play good and to have any chance. I think and, you know, I'm playing good and have a lot of confidence and it's my home Grand Slam. People are going to support me, but you know, sometimes it's, it's not support. They can get, <laughs> make you beat Roger. I think you need to know how to play tennis. You need to play tennis well on, on the day. And, if I have any, any chance of beating him, and you know, that's why he's the greatest player of the sport. With the start of the junior championships, all eyes shifted from Bernard to sister Sarah, but she was defeated in the first round. That evening, they swapped spots. For everyone else, it was a mesmerising, if not painful lesson, as her brother learned some costly tricks at the hands of a master. Kleister's made a remarkable recovery after Lena disappointed fans, missing four chances at match point in the second set. But the drama really unfolded on High Sense Arena when seventh seed Thomas Burdich felt Almagro had deliberately lined him up. Burdich won, but his decision not to shake hands was not well received. Serena Williams shocked the tennis world. After a long injury layoff, the five-time champion just didn't have the stamina, succumbing to unseeded Russian Ekaterina Makarova. She played really well. She went for broke on a lot of shots, and I made 37 errors, and that kind of tells the story of the match. Kai Nishikori became the first Japanese man in the open era to reach a quarter-final, beating Joe Wilfred Songer in five sets. In the second week, Caroline Wozniacki, hungry for a title to retain her world number one ranking. She was robbed of her dream by an even hungrier Kleisters. Four days remaining, Nishikori, carrying the hopes of a Japanese nation, fell in straight sets to Scottish blood Andy Murray. Australia Day came to Melbourne Park, distracting Azarenka as she battled it out with Kleisters. The drone didn't get in the way of her victory though, jetting Azarenka into the finals. The other finals position was earned by feisty Maria Sharapova after the Russian took out world number two seed Petra Kvitova. But the Australia Day crescendo was staged on centre court, where Rafael Nadal, true to form, continued his recent history of dominance over Federer at Grand Slam events, ensuring his final spot in four sets. It would be decided the following day who he would face in the most important match of all, 
Murray proved to be the most difficult obstacle for Djokovic. A thrilling five-set game finally falling in the world number one's favour. The night of night for women's tennis was introduced by three-time Australian Open winner Martina Hingis. An early lead by Sharapova was short-lived. A determined Azarenka powering her way through two sets to take the Australian Open title. Then the most anticipated match of all. Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic in a clash that would prove to be everything a crowd could hope for. The longest Grand Slam final in history. But only one man could take the grand prize. When they write the story of the great tennis matches ever played, this one has got to be right up the front of the book. Five hours and 53 minutes. Novak Djokovic is the champion in Melbourne for the third time. He is the, he is the Australian Open champion.